So, thank you, Chairman. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Kaneko from Tokyo University. Today, I'm going to do a presentation under the title of Evaluation of Acoustic Properties of Sodium Potassium Niobate Film. So far, much research has been conducted about the PDT device film, uh, PDT film devices. Some of the devices are already used in commercialized products such as uh, inkjet nozzles in printer or gyro sensors in mobile phone or digital camera. And it is expected to the, for these uh, products to expand their market in the future. And also, uh, moreover, some of the new devices such as uh, energy harvesters or RF MEMS switches are uh, also developed these days. So the demand for the PDT film will be growing in the future. However, it is a large problem that the PDT includes the lead in high concentrations. Some of the products are start to use the lead-free material. However, PDT is still used because there is no substitute at the moment. So, and one of the candidates to substitute the PDT is the potassium and sodium niobate. It is called the KNN. It is a lead-free piezoelectric materials, and uh, it also has a perovskite structure, such uh, same as the PZTs, and it has excellent property, uh, excellent piezoelectric properties. However, the material constants, such as uh, elastic compliance or dielectric constants and piezoelectric constants, have not been reported about the thin film. And these constants will be helpful for the device design and the simulations in the future. So, our research objective is uh, to evaluate the blanket KNN, which is deposited on the 4-inch wafer by measuring the material constants. So, in this research, we uh, conducted the three approaches. First is the piezoelectric resonators. This is a common method, uh, this is a standard method for the single crystals. And the material constants can be measured from the series and the parallel resonate, resonance frequencies of the resonators. However, in case of the thin film, these thickness shear mode and the cylinder thickness longitudinal mode cannot be fabricated because of the, it is a different, uh, it's different polarization directions and the, it's short of thickness, respectively. Therefore, we apply the second uh, approaches, that is the measurement of the leaky run wave uh, by using the line focus beam ultrasonic mechanical characterization systems, LFB UMC system. Because the velocities of the leaky run wave depends on the all of the material constants, so we can determine the all of the material constants by fitting the measured, measured material constants uh, from the resonators and the measured um, velocities and the calculated velocities. And on the third approach, we also perform the X-ray diffraction, XRD, and the scanning nonlinear dielectric microscopy, SNDM, to measure the, its film property. So next, I will talk about the uh, piezoelectric resonators, which we fabricated. On our previous research, uh, we have to deposit the bottom electrodes uh, before we deposit the uh, piezoelectric film, but uh, we cannot use this way because uh, our target is a uh, uh, blanket KNN film, which is already deposited on OH wafer. So we developed, uh, in this research, we developed a new method. We fabricate the KNN uh, resonators with a blanket film from top side, and we also use the platinum seed layer at the bottom, electro uh, bottom electrode. And this is the KNN deposition conditions. We deposit the KNN uh, blanket film on the 4-inch wafer, which consists of silicon, silicon dioxide, titanium, and platinum. And this is the deposition conditions. And after the deposition, we measure the density, its densities, by using the Archimedes method. And this is the results of the density and the film thickness. And these figures summarize its process flow to, uh, of the resonators. We remove the KNN by using ion millings, and uh, we deposit the top and the bottom electrodes using the alumina lift-off processes. And finally, we remove the, uh, we release the re resonators using a xenon diaphragm etching. And this is the results of the length expander mode, and this is a typical uh, uh, admittance properties. And this is a tendency of the resonance frequency, which is changing its resonator length. 
And from these results and these theoretical equations, S11e and K31 square can be measured like as following. And for discussions, measured K31 square was very small. So we estimated uh, film properties uh, such as orientations were not so good about the film from these results. And this is the result of the radial expander mode. And this is a typical uh, admittance properties. And this is the tendency of the resonance frequencies by changing its uh, radius. And from these results and these theoretical equations and some relationship, and we obtained the uh, Poisson ratio is about 0 0.33. And from this, uh, we measured the S12e and S66e and the KR square can be measured as following. And this is the result of the thickness longitudinal mode. And this is a typical uh, admittance resonance properties. And this is the ascendancy of the resonance frequency by changing its uh, radials. And from these results and these theoretical equations and these uh, obtained values, we measure the C33ED and the KT square and the C33E can be measured as following. And for discussions, the a measured uh, resonance peak was very small. And also, this C33E value was also smaller than we expected. And we also measured the free capacity by measuring the resonance, uh, uh, sorry, reactance uh, in kilohertz range. And this is the uh, uh, frequencies in, uh, on different radials of the resonators. And from these results and these equations and some obtained values, uh, we measured the epsilon 33 t and the D31 uh, as, like, uh, as following. And next, let me introduce about the uh, uh, LFB UMC systems briefly. The incident wave, sharp 1 and sharp 0, are generated from the transducers and it propagates through the sapphire rods and the water. And uh, it converts the run wave at the surface, uh, uh, at the uh, surface of the spacements and it converted to the run wave and uh, it propagates on the uh, boundaries as a leaky run wave and with any uh, with emitting the, some energy into the water and the return uh, emitting energy returns to the uh, sapphire rod uh, through the sharp two so the sharp zero and the sharp two is interfered by changing the distance between sapphire rod and the spacements and obtain this VZ curve and by removing the background as lens capacities and uh, ex extraction the interference co components and uh, FF FFT analysis, the oscillation interval delta Z can be obtained. And finally, we get obtained the, uh, we measure the velocity of the leaky run wave from these theoretical equations. To generate the uh, leaky run wave, we fabricated this kind of KNN diameter, a uh, diaphragm and by using the micro uh, lens technologies. And uh, this is, a, uh, in, the, in this research, we covered uh, the aluminum, uh, we covered the KNN with aluminum on top side. And uh, this is the raw data of the VZ curve and at uh, 225 uh, megahertz. And we also performed the frequency characterization experiments uh, with changing the, its measurement frequency from the 100 to 300 megahertz. And this is the results of the phase velocities which we obtained. Uh, from, this <coughs> from this research, uh, the anti-symmetric mode and the symmetric mode are uh, measured uh, are like the, as following. And uh, you can see the velocities of A0 and S0 mode are different and depends on its uh, wavelengths. So these characteristics should be reasonable because uh, the velocities are uh, changes as its uh, film thickness. So finally, we perform the XRD and the SNDM measurements. This is the result of XRD. And you can see the film thickness is mostly oriented in the C axis. However, other uh, orientations such as uh, 110 or 210 appears on the surface. So from this result, the film is not so highly C axis. And uh, this is the result of the SNDM, which can be measured the polarization directions by scanning. And uh, 
This is the result, and the bright color shows the C axis, and the dark color shows the other orientation, such as 110 or something. So from this picture, I also confirm that this uh, XRD data, and, uh, it, conf uh, and it suggests that uh, other orientations also appeared in high percentages. So for discussions, uh, we, in this research, we observed that uh, we, we made measure that these material constants of the blanket KNN film. And uh, some of the materials, uh, material constants such as a K31 square or C331 is not so, uh, uh, is smaller than we expected. So uh, I think this is a di because of the different orientations of our films. So we concluded that uh, these results which we obtained is uh, reasonable for the not so highly uh, KNN thin film, uh, not so highly C axis of the KNN film. So it is expected to measure the more excellent uh, material constants by using more C highly C axis uh, materials. So for conclusions, uh, we measure the material constants uh, of the blanket KNN film by using the uh, resonators from the series and the parallel resonators, uh, resonance frequencies. And we also measured the A0 or S0 mode of the liquid runway by using uh, LFV uh, UMC systems. And uh, we, the measured constants and the results of XRD and SNDM uh, show also show that uh, the film is not so highly uh, C-axis oriented. And the measured constants should be reasonable uh, for the not so highly uh, C-axis oriented uh, KNN film. So our future work uh, we will determine all the material constant of the uh, blanket KNN film, and by using the uh, by fitting the measured constant for the resonance uh, resonators and the uh, calculated uh, velocities and the measured velocities. And finally, our uh, acknowledgement: uh, we'd like to thank the Professor Yasuo Cho and his students to help us to measure the SNDM uh, microscopy. Thank you for the listening. <laughs>